Hi, it's Mommy Brown, and through breakfast, I teach the kids about life and conduct, right? And so, every day, reading Proverbs and walking through Proverbs helps them learn a lot. God told me common sense isn't common when you're not using the Lord's word as your compass. So, we're going to read through Proverbs 22, and um, I'll read it through the NASB first, and then again through the NIV. And we'll just walk through some of the things that God highlighted to me for the boys. A good name is to be more desired than great riches. Favor is better than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have a common bond. The Lord is the maker of them all. The prudent sees the evil and hides himself, but the naive go on and are punished for it. The reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Thorns and snares are in the ways of the perverse. He who guards himself will be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower becomes the lender's slave. He who sows iniquity will reap vanity, and the rod of his fury will perish. He who is generous will be blessed, for he gives some of his food to the poor. Drive out the scoffer, and contention will go out. Even strife and dishonor will cease. He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious, the king is his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the treacherous man. The sluggard says there is a lion outside. I shall be slain in the streets. The mouth of an adulteress is a deep pit. He who is cursed of the Lord will fall into it. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. He who oppresses the poor to make much for himself or who gives to the rich will only come to poverty. Incline your ear to hear the words of the wise and apply your mind to my knowledge. For it will be pleasant if you keep them within you that they may be ready on your lips so that your trust may be in the Lord. I have taught you today, even you, have I not written to you excellent things of counsels and knowledge to make you know the certainty of the words of truth that you may correctly answer to him who sent you? Do not rob the poor because he is poor or crush the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their case and take the life of those who rob, who rob them. Do not associate with a man given to anger or go with a hot-tempered man, lest you learn his ways and find a snare for yourself. Do not be among those who give pledges, among those who become sureties for debts. If you have nothing with which to pay, why should he take your bed from under you? Do not move the ancient boundaries which your fathers have set. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Amen. So that was Proverbs 22. And every morning, simply reading through Proverbs, and I typically read the NIV to the boys, 
and they have a Bible that is the NIRV. So it's the reader's edition in third grade level so that uh, my six-year-old son can read through with me um, through his Bible. So we're just going to go verse by verse and really talk about what we talked about. Um, making the word um, easy and um, in your day-to-day -day really helps make sure that you can ask questions, that they can learn, and that they can learn naturally, right? And so, a good man is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver and gold. And so, we talked about a good name and reputation and honor and the importance of having a good reputation. Now, of course, we know that it can bring vanity as well. If we have a good reputation in the world, and that's all we're concerned about. So, of course, we want to have that good reputation with God. But it shows here that having, being esteemed, being honorable is more important than having money. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. So really helping the boys to see, right, that we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. That we are all made in his image and in his likeness. And all of us deserve dignity and respect no matter how much we have or how much we don't have. God has made us all. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. And so we talked about the fact that being prudent, there is a, a danger that you can perceive so that you can respond accordingly. That everything that comes up against us is not for us to automatically fight. And so whether that is for a six and a four year old, when, you're, when you come up to, in conflict, does that mean I'm automatically supposed to fight? We gotta go to the Lord based on that situation and ask, what am I supposed to do in this? So that we respond accordingly. The simple keep going and pay the penalty. So there is a cost that if we automatically go into something ready to fight and always fight, we're really going to bring more stuff to us than needs to be, right? Humility is the fear of the Lord. The wages are riches and honor and life. So we know Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, right? We know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge. And so here... When, when looking at humility being the fear of the Lord, humility and the fear of the Lord is what God wants for us to have. When we have the proper view of ourselves, of our righteousness is as filthy rags to God, right? As Paul says, wretched man I am, who will deliver me from this corpse, this body? That we do not esteem ourselves, but that we fear the Lord, that he is exalted, that he is magnified. And the boys love for me to talk about God being magnified because they love their magnifying glass. And everything through that glass is bigger. So when we talk about magnifying God, we talk about the fact that everything else around the magnifying glass that's not under the magnifying glass looks smaller in comparison to what's under the magnifying glass. And so no matter our problems, no matter our pain, no matter what's going on, magnify God and it will help us to not lean on our own understanding, but in always acknowledge him so that he directs our path, right? In the paths of the wicked are snares and pitfalls, but those who would preserve their life stay far from them. Well, my boys really like agriculture. And I told you, I teach a lot through the Bible. And so there are Venus flytraps. There are plants that eat bugs. And so we talk about the fact that, yes, man was cursed, woman was cursed, the snake was cursed, Satan was cursed, the land was cursed. So there's plants that open up and trap bugs. And so for science, just the other day, we talked about Venus flytraps and the fact that they lie open, ready to snap. And there's three points on their 
what looks like mouths and if a fly a a really they eat more spiders if a spider hits mo more than one of them in a certain period of time it closes and the more that that insect fights the tighter it gets until it is sealed and then that trap turns into a digestive system for the plant and so i was able to take this path of the wicked or snares and pitfalls there is snares there are these traps on that path but those who are looking to preserve their life see i don't want to go anywhere near there right so we also talk about the fact that proverbs talks about the narrow way and then the wide way the enticement of the sinners in proverbs 1 the nice thing about going over proverbs every month is that you're hearing the same verses over and over you're, you're relearning the same concepts over and over, right? So you get some doses and you remember some things, but keep in mind their development, right? They're not going to remember everything we say. They're not, they're not able to, right? But whatever they're supposed to grab, they grab some plant, some water. God gives the increase. So our job is to plant, right? So we plant those things knowing that God is faithful, that he is going to do that increase in them, right? So, verse 6. Start children off in the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. So, that training up is intentional, right? That training up is modeling. That training up is demonstrating. That training up is observation for them. So, I'm not only... Um, speaking the word of God, but I, I need to live out the word of God. So if I say in your anger, do not sin, they'll see mommy get angry. Well, how does mom respond when she's angry and not sin? How does she de-escalate? How does she self-regulate? How does she display discipline, consistency, and commitment? Because these are the things she's asking from me. Meanwhile, all people are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So it's hard for us parents sometimes when we have this little bundle of joy and they lie for the first time. We're appalled. Oh, my child has lied. I can't believe it. But you're my baby. They're born in sin, shaped in iniquity, right? They are fallen, right? Because we all are. And so they don't need to learn how to sin. It's, it's in them. It's flesh. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? We, our job is to train them up on this is the right path. They are not neutral. So we're not starting at a base zero and building them up. We are all born in sin, shaping in iniquity. So we are lower than zero. Automatically, if a baby is upset, they might kick and bite and have a tantrum and all those things. Our job as parents is to regulate our response and reaction so that our response isn't an adult tantrum. Because how many of us can have just an adult tantrum, right? It's not us rolling around and kicking and screaming, but it might be us hollering. It might be us saying words that we didn't want to say. We need to place a guard at our mouth, right? That's what the Bible says. And so our job is training up the child in the way that they should go means that we are teaching them a part of nurture, the word nurture means discipline. And so my job is to tell them, this is the narrow road. This is your choice. This is the consequence of your choices. So I lay before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. That's one of the first scriptures they learned. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Because I wanted them to see there are two paths. And this one path is going to look enticing sometimes. You're not going to see the Venus fly traps. Because the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's going to look appealing. But it is not going to be fruitful for you. Right? Verse 7. The rich rule over the poor. And the borrower is a slave to the lender. 
So helping them to understand a lender ends up being over the borrower. Money management. It's never too early to talk about money management. And the Bible talks about everything, right? So in money management, it's do you really need that thing? Or do you want that thing? Right? And later on, it talks about that in um, chapter 22. So understanding that there is a, 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 a an order that happens in society and there is a responsibility for those who have more money but sometimes they don't do well with that responsibility right sometimes rich people don't treat poor people well right sometimes rich people use that power to do terrible things um, and so really helping them to see the world through the Bible and seeing helping them see God speaks to this verse 8 Whoever sows injustice reaps calamity, and the rod they weld in fury will be broken. So they're not protected. So they know about sowing and reaping. Again, they like agriculture. So we grow microgreens, we grow wheat grass and, and cabbage and mixed greens, and we put in our salads. And so they see seeds that get planted and then grow, right? So they understand, I can't sow a wheatgrass seed and get an orange tree. What I sow, I reap. So if whatever a man soweth, he reaps this, what are we sowing? What are we sowing, right? If we sow injustice, calamity is coming. And we can't always see that calamity at the beginning, right? Because, of course, we're going to have our babies ask, God is so good, why do bad things happen? And the answer is, it's a fallen world. And I'm sorry, baby, and it's terrible, but it is a fallen world. So, the generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. Very straightforward. Drive out the mocker, and out goes the strife. Quarrels and insults are ended. If we experience our babies who are mocking or scoffing, are we letting them know it is not tolerated? The standard of God is you have to be removed from my presence at this time. Pray, repent. You've sinned against God. You've sinned against whoever you scoffed or mocked. That shameful insult aren't, um, aren't welcomed here. This is a place of love right of truth and of love and where are those shameful insults coming from a lot of times insults are coming from a hurt place where is that hurt place and we're going to need to dig into that and and express ourselves right now for really really young babies my recommendation is always something artistic like having them draw having them paint having them use some kinetic sand get their hands into it and have them draw whatever's on their mind at that point, they may, you know, draw some things maybe that are disturbing, maybe some things that are like, I'm a little appalled at what's going on. Let them draw it out. While they're drawing, pray, right? Just pray and be with them to have them explain, why did you draw this? What are you seeing? Why are you seeing that? Because children handle trauma differently, right? The way their brains grow, um, they are at a very different stage than we are as adults and so it's really helpful to look at a child developmentally and see where they're at and not just their age but i'm talking about their stage so you can have a 15 year old that has gone through serious trauma that has lost a parent that has gone through their their, their a divorce of their parents that that has seen someone die that any of those things and though they are a teenager emotionally they developmentally may not be at that stage yet so they don't know how to process their feelings so when they go through something they don't have the words to express and they lash out in insults so make sure that your words are gold and not garbage whatever your standard is parent keep to that standard let your yes be yes and your no be no right that's what the Bible says and so with your yes being yes and your no being no, that means whatever that family rule is, you stick to that family rule, right? Love your Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
So, okay, what does that look like, sound like, feel like? Let's do an activity. Let's have a family meeting about what that looks like, feels like, sounds like. So that we understand what that looks like, right? My babies, um, I made up a song of the Ten Commandments so that they know the Ten Commandments. And that fifth commandment, honor your father and mother so that your days will be longer. What does honor mean? And so my six-year-old, one of his projects was honor and going to the Bible, going to the dictionary, I'm sorry. And so seeing honor meaning esteem, meaning consideration, meaning thoughtfulness, right? So, okay, now what does that look like, sound like, feel like? So whatever those standards are, hey, your repercussion for not respecting others or not respecting yourself or not respecting your property is you're going to be removed from being able to use that property because you didn't respect it. So it's not a, oh, I'm, you know, oh, I'll give you another chance. You give them another chance, they're going to use it. Also, if we lose control, they're gonna they're going to um, not have respect for you at that point either. So, our job is to stay, cast our anxieties on God because He cares for us, right? Our job is to stay cemented in our stance with God, steadfast, immovable in the fruit of the Spirit so that we are long-suffering with our children. We are patient with our children, which means when they lash out, our response is not mirroring them because that's what we naturally do as humans. We mirror each other. So if, we, if he lashes out, if she lashes out, and then I lash out, then they're going to, they're literally playing a control game and they just won. How many of us know that our babies love power? And they need positive power. So give them that positive power through their pajama options or which towel they're going to use for showers. But control what you can control. And don't be frustrated about what you can't control. We can't make our baby sleep. But we can control you're going to be in that room. And you can choose to do what you want for your nap time if you're not going to sleep. But I'm letting you know the consequence. If you don't have a nap, you're going to go to bed early. So you're going to miss that family game time. I don't want to miss family game time. Okay, well, that's your choice. So I expect that you'll be falling asleep and we'll then after nap be able to set up for you to pick your game time so that after dinner we can have that game time, right? I can control the game time. I can't control if he sleeps. We can't control if they eat or not, but we can control if there is some kind of snack afterwards. Hey, everybody, here's the plate. Here's the portions, you know, um, after you're finished, you can go ahead and have your sliced apple and honey. Well, I don't want this. Oh, that's okay. You can choose not to eat that, but you won't then receive the sliced apple and hummus. After the food, then the hummus. But I want the hummus. Oh, I understand. You have power to get the hummus if you eat your food, right? So that way, we control what we can control and not be frustrated with what we cannot control. One who loves a pure heart and who speaks with grace will have the king for a friend. God opens up doors. God has the hearts of the kings. And people who love pure hearts and speak with grace will uh, make friends in high places. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he frustrates the words of the unfaithful. This is really speaking about the reward of being with the Lord, right? He is all wisdom. He is all knowledge. He is all counsel, right? And so um, he stands with those who are faithful with him. And the beauty, the beauty of, of, of God's word is that in Revelation 19, on the prayer call we're in Revelation, it speaks about um, those of his people. We are chosen we are called and we are faithful. And it's not according to us. It's according to who God is, right? It's just like God calling us righteous. Our righteousness is as filthy rag, but he is Lord our righteousness. It's because of the blood of Jesus. So we're not the vine or the vine dresser. He is. We are the branch attached to him. So our job is to abide, to rest in him, to trust in him. And everything else is added, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added. The sluggard says, there's a lion outside. 
I'll be killed in the public square. And we talked about the fact that the sluggard, the lazy person, uses ridiculous excuses. What is a lion doing in the middle of the street? Lions aren't going to be in the middle of the street. Any excuse not to do work, to be to avoid. And a man that doesn't work doesn't eat. That's one of my other baby's favorite scripture. A man who doesn't work doesn't eat. And so there is family contributions that happen in our household. We don't call them chores because we want them to understand the significance of their role in the family. And so they all have family contributions down to the baby. She clicks the light switches off and on. She throws her diaper away when she's not wearing one of her um, cloth diapers. She is responsible for putting her toys back in their cubbies. And that's her family contribution. The mouth of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. A man who was under the Lord's wrath falls into it. So even as young as these boys are, I let them know there are people who will come into your life. There are girls who will come into your life who will offer you things that God says are sin. And you are not supposed to take them. You are not because it is a pit that you will fall into just like the Venus flytrap. And you may not know it's a pit. The thing about the Venus flytrap that attracts the insects is that it smells sweet. And all of those other carnivorous will say plants have some kind of nectar or sweet smell to them. So it's attracting to these bugs so that the bugs come unknowingly trying to eat and they get trapped and die. And so we, they love um, characters in the Bible just like the next, you know, child. And so Samson is a great example of that, isn't he? All of this strength and here comes Delilah. And the fact that Delilah wasn't even the first woman he messed with and, and got jacked up by. There was a, another woman. And the fact that his parents said, stay away from folks that aren't like us. And it wasn't a matter of nationality. No, not at all. It was a matter of who serves the Lord. Because if they're not going to serve the Lord, they're going to lead you astray. They're going to do some stuff that's not right. They're going to lead you away from God. And isn't that what happened? Even to the wisest man, Solomon, right? Didn't David have an issue with women? So I speak to my boys very, um, um, very intentionally about things smell sweet. But that doesn't mean it's not a trap. So we got to go to God. This is my one of my favorite scriptures of all of this. Verse 15. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. Folly is stupidity. Folly is foolishness. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. So when, when our children act foolish we shouldn't be surprised we shouldn't but the rod of discipline will drive it far away and that does not automatically mean just beat our kids and it's going to beat it out of them we have to train up a child in the way that they should go so they will not depart from it so if we're training up our children especially early there are certain foundational things that they get so that we don't have to get to the point of physically disciplining them, right? So there are things that, that we help them to understand. I am snatching you from the fiery hell, right? So, some, so, so if you're not going to listen and I've trained you up and you keep going on this thing and, and I've trained you up, discipline and the measure of discipline is going to look different, right? If they're going over and over again and doing dangerous things or doing hurtful things to their siblings, right? Or they're older and so now they're doing things dangerous to society. They can get them put in jail. I tell them, you can either govern yourself or the world has no problem finding a system to govern you. And it's sad, but it's true, right? And so their responsibility is to properly allow the word of God to govern them, to, 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 to lead their path in righteousness. 
one who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth, and one who gives gifts to the rich both come to poverty. Morale, right, y'all? I asked my son the other day, I said, can a good person who doesn't believe in God have a solid morale and a solid truth system? And he thought about it for a little bit. And he said, well, if Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, if all knowledge begins with God, then I guess no, huh? I said, right. Because we as people change. What I thought was right yesterday, I might say today is wrong. Or vice versa. But the only person, the only being that doesn't change is God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13.8. So because he is constant, we have to rely on him. And he tells us what is right and wrong. So that we're not wavering and, and changing based on the situation, right? So, pay attention and turn your ear to the sayings of the wise. Apply your heart to what I teach, for it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips, so that your trust may be in the Lord. I teach you today, even you. Have I not written 30 sayings for you, saying of counsel and sayings of counsel and knowledge, teaching you to be honest and to speak truth, so that you bring back truthful reports to those you serve. I love um, Shema, which means listen. And listen, Shema, actually not only means listen, but obey. So what we say at our house, it's LOL. Listen, obey, and love. LOL. That's a standard. And that LOL, listen, obey, and love, is what's here, right? Hear the words. Pay attention. Turn your ears to the saying of the wise. So don't just hear it, but listen to it and apply it so that it can be on your lips. What is, What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. So my children know a lot of scripture, right? Because we sing scripture songs and, and they hear me on the prayer call in the morning. And they hear me praying for people. When, when they wake up, they see me at the table with my Bible. And I asked my, young, my youngest boy, four years old, how did you get all that scripture in you? He said, um, I heard it. I said, right. But did you listen? He said, well, yes, ma'am. Right. So it became a part of you. We have to digest the word so that that's what comes out of us. And we have to practice that when everything is good so that when things aren't good, that still automatically comes out, right? We have to practice that, right? So I practice a lot of things with them and role play with them even when the situation isn't heightened. So when they're jumping all around and bouncing and energetic, I'm like, let's just breathe. Just let's rest real quick. And they automatically know, okay, wait, I need to check my heart. It's going fast, mommy. Right, so let's breathe and slow that heart down. They'll come and give me a hug and rest. But I practice that when they're not bouncing around so that they know automatically when I put up my hands, they're like, okay, I need to cool down. I need to settle down for a second, right? And so there are certain things in training them up that make it a lot easier when all three of them are jumping off the, the roof. That they're like, okay, wait. Mommy's not saying anything. She doesn't have to yell. She doesn't have to. She just makes a hand motion and, and they know. The second saying, do not exploit the poor because they are poor and do not crush the needy in court for the Lord will take up their case and will, and will exact life for life. And so I teach them, right, that, that, way, that weighing. And you see it a lot in Leviticus. We're reading through the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and we're in Numbers right now. And they saw all throughout Leviticus a lot of things of like weighing, right? Where it's like, well, you do this. Well, now you have to make it right by doing this. This is what justice looks like. So if I take your cattle, now I have to give you a cattle plus another cattle, let's say, right? So here 
their understanding. You need to do what's right because there is a scale being weighed. And even if the world doesn't get the scale right, God is always right. The third saying, do not make friends with hot tempered person, with a hot tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. There's that ensnared again, right? So pick your friends wisely, boys or girls, right? That we got to pick our friends wisely. And just as adults, right, I'd say that friends are force multipliers. That having good friends can change your life. Or having debilitating friends can change your life. They say we can know the, the, the reality of your success based off of the five friends that you had and the most recent books that you've read. Interesting, right? You're the sum of the five people that you've been around and the books that you've read. So we got to be careful with our friends. Now, that doesn't mean get rid of everybody else. That doesn't mean that. But there are degrees of friendship. Everybody is not a covenant friend. Some people are associates. Some people are assignments, right? Some people are, are folks that we know. Everybody didn't go up to the Mount of Transfiguration. Everybody didn't go into the Garden of Gethsemane. Everybody wasn't at the cross, right? Do not be one who shakes hands in pledge or put up security for debts. If you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snared, snatched from, uh, from under you. And they were like, wait a minute, what does that mean? Well, how could they take my bed? I said, well, the bed's not yours if you didn't pay for it. Well, how did I pay for it? I said, you made a pledge. A pledge is an IOU. I said, so, easily using your toys. Okay, I'm going to I'm buy this toy from you, but I don't have the money right now. I'll write you an IOU, and tomorrow I'll give you the money for it. Tomorrow comes and I don't have the money. What are you going to do? I'm going to take my toy back. You didn't pay for it. That's what debt is, right? He said, what if you don't have the money to buy it and you need it? I said, well, of course, we use wisdom. So there are some things that we need. If we lack the means to pay for a thing, then we need to really assess, do we need the thing? And then if we do need the thing, then we need to use the best wisdom as possible, right? So being a good steward over everything that God has given. Interestingly enough, God has provided us stewardship over things, but the the only thing he has provided us dominion over is dominion over the earth and self-control. I don't control my babies. I'm supposed to be able to control myself. And in me controlling myself and governing myself, it gives them an example of how they can govern themselves. The fifth saying, do not move an ancient boundary stone set up by your ancestors ultimately valuing the wisdom of the elders and boundaries if you would move those boundaries that meant you were taking up more to snatch something from someone else and we talk a lot about boundaries with our babies um, because um, they need to understand what they have control over and what is theirs that they are able to say no and that that is a complete answer that is a complete sentence you don't always have to give a reason for for your nose so the last verse the sixth saying do you see someone skilled in their work they will serve before kings they will not serve before officials of low rank our gifts make room for us and so we allow our children through homeschool to really discover themselves and to discover their passion and to discover their identity and this really shows them whatever the skill is that they have you'll be able to use that skill and they know multiple people who are artists and photographers we have a good community around them that love them and this covenant community really shows them passions and skills that God has provided and that they're using for the glory of God. So it was really awesome to be able to end off at that note. And the Lord allowed for me to really use, and he does that so often, right? Use the word that I shared with them to um, be, be just reiterated throughout the day. Just reiterated throughout the day because we're supposed to live the scripture, right? When they lie down, when they rise up, and they're coming, and they're going, when we're reading scripture to them and speaking through scripture, 
it trains them up in the way that they should go. And let's be honest, it convicts us too. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus, no condemnation in Christ Jesus, but it convicts us for us to go about and repent so that we can then be more like him. So I pray that um, Proverbs 22 bless you and it sort of gives you a, a base if you don't feel like you have one to be able to go teach your babies, right? We, are, we all have a, a, a measure of anointing to be able to teach our children. So um, if you have any questions, if you're like, well, how do I go about that? Or what tools did you use? Let me know and I'd be happy to share. Um, for those who are believers in Jesus, who, who wanna share their faith with their family and just don't know how, I'm here to share. Um, so I love you all. Have a beautiful day.